Check this out. Conversational image segmentation with what? Just Gemini 2.5. That means we might probably need to say goodbye to all those custom image segmentation models and custom training label data because as of now with this new feature of Gemini release a couple of days ago, you can just literally type whatever you want in a given image. Not only it will find that objects for you, but it will give you the pixels of that segment so you can detach and capture that object within the image with all irregular shapes even if that's the case and thanks to this new feature of gemini i was also able to create this demo for myself which can detect what are the safe place for my drone to automatically land to give you an example this is a shot of an airport and using this new segmentation solution by gemini 2.5 it perfectly captured for me all the safe and unsafe zones that my drone can land, but not just detecting, but also giving me the segments through the pixels that are highlighted here. So in this video, I'm gonna show you that how you can practically use it in action and how I built this demo and how it will really empower some new use cases that you could even never thought about it, but because of this new feature, this is really unlocking you for another phase of capabilities. Let's get into that. So what does conversational image segmentation mean? As you might know, image segmentation is referring to the point that when you want to detect a specific object, but not just having those bounding boxes, you want to have that shape of that object that you're looking for sort of specified in a given image based on your use case. Now with this conversational image segmentation through Gemini 2.5, that means you can point to anything in the image with just words that you type and explain. So no more sort of training data or custom clicking or drawing. You just literally describe what you want with that given image and Gemini understand exactly what you mean and it will give you the segments so you can display that pixels of that area that you're looking for to detecting that without literally training any data, having any model or even no fine tuning or custom ML knowledge, which is absolutely powerful. So. What is the evolution of this segmentation? Previously, we had these bounding boxes detection, like for example, we had detected the, uh, the cat in the given, for example, picture. So we should sort of see a rectangular box that showcases where the cat is, but we went one step further. We wanted to have that pixel perfect outlines. That means even the cat that has sort of different shapes, so it should show by pixels how that shape of the cat is followed within the given image, which we call it segmentation beyond just object detection, which is also supported by Gemini. Now, we don't even need to specifically train a model to make sure that object is there to be segmented. We can just type, for, for example, show me the cat that is sleeping on a red cushion. So even if there are multiple cats in the given image, because of this specific condition that we are providing, it can understand and segment that a specific cat among all the cats exist in the image. Having that sort of reasoning capability in image segmentation is not achievable through first and second scenario. And this is only available through conversational understanding and reasoning, which a model like Gemini perfectly has that. And now it's augmented by image segmentation. So to give you an example, let's say in this given image, I want to highlight just summer vacation items. You can see that I have all these like watermelon, uh, lemonade drink, uh, sunglasses. You can see they're sort of um, segmented with the highlights around them, but objects like camera and keys are not even detected and not segmented because they're not relevant. So having such a conversational request like this is not feasible to have this as an input for any other image segmentation model because they are specifically trained on label objects there is no even object that I'm highlighting in my query. I'm asking for a reason-based prompt, and then that should be reflected to some objects by Gemini to be shown an image. This is the difference that you will get. And of course, this image just for demonstration example, this is not a one that I'm actually running on Gemini yet, which I will show you shortly. Here's another example. Let's say you want to ask that circle all the mistakes in this math solution. Again, this is just a, a demonstration example. This is not an actual math. But as you can see, if there are issues with this math equation, I can segment those, not just bounding boxes, even the pixels of that specific portion of that math equation that has that uh, faulty or, or error issue with that equation. So 
For this example, again, no custom training, no labeling needed, and this is all by just pure Gemini. And again, I'm not asking for any specific object here. I'm, I'm asking for a conditional situation for detecting that object. And because we are having conversational image segmentation by Gemini that has reasoning, we can have that achieved for our segmentation. Another one that I personally ran this through the demo that I'm gonna show you the official demo of Gemini 2.5 image segmentation. I found this actually chest x-ray image and there are sort of early cancer issues that is not even feasible or, or easily feasible for experts to identify that object. It was written in that paper. So I took a screenshot of that image from that paper and I gave it to Gemini 2.5 for image segmentation. I asked that to take any potential cancer um, or maybe suspicious to cancer areas. And it truly and perfectly and precisely captured that area, not just bounding box, but also you can see the segments with these red pixels added as a layer on the top of that chest X-ray. And it confirmed that this is a true detection. Well, I'm not saying that Gemini is good for potentially relying on 100% for healthcare scenarios. It's not a healthcare advice, obviously. This was just more for, for my sake of curiosity to give it a test. And I was really surprised. So. These are a couple of examples that we just conversational reasoning that you could enable image segmentation by Gemini 2.5. And they have also provided a couple of more interesting examples in their official report when they release this new feature. For giving an example, you can detect objects with the relationships. For example, person that is holding umbrella or the third book from the left. These are really not, not simple for any image segmentation model to capture that or the most willful flower in the bucket. So something like this is now feasible with this new feature. Or conditional logic, let's say just highlight the people who are not sitting. So there are lots of people and they are not segmented, but just these two because of that condition. And again, when we talk about this, it's not just object detection, it is segmentations. You can see that these people are colored differently because these pixels are captured through the result that we received from Gemini. Even this is actually a good example. This is the one that it's not feasible to achieve because we are just prompting that, hey, uh, give me the segments of objects or areas that we need to clean up. And this is not a regular shape. It, all, it was able to capture this object. And these are the pixels in red added to that, I think, coffee split. So let me run that in, in action so you will see how it perfectly captured this. There you go. This is the example in the Google AI Studio. You can see that I'm typing here area that should be cleaned up. So original picture had this, which is sort of a coffee-ish color, but with the segments added, it's perfectly following this irregular conditional shape of an object that is not even clear what we're asking for. So this power of reasoning with, again, segmentation was truly impressive through this specific example when I was reading that actually report. So now let me get you into the code and to see, okay, how we can call Gemini API to have this specific segmentation and maybe capturing the areas that we could display that over original image. All right, if you follow my pointer, it says that the model predict a JSON list which each item represent a segmentation mass. So that means if you, for example, ask something like identify and segment this object A or B, C, there are multiple maybe objects of same type or different types are detected. It will retrieve all of them to you. And each item has a bounding box, box 2D in the format of Y0, X0, Y1, X1. So these are the normalized uh, coordinates that show you the area that the object that you're trying to, you're trying to do segmentation is there. So you can at least identify the object. When then you identify the object, the area within that object that we need to do the segmentation is now in encoded in base 65. So we can have that probability map of pixels identified for having that segmentation in place. So we can use that to be the values between zero to 20, uh, 255 to draw them over our original picture as segmented area. So here's the code. You can see that you're just simply connecting to your Gemini, you can obviously use Gilead really Studio key or use Vertex AI to have Gemini 2.5 being called. And I would say use this actually helper function to parse the outcome of the prompt from Gemini that has those information of uh, bounding boxes and also segmented areas. Now this prompt is very important because this is what I also use for the demo that I'm gonna show you, that you're asking Gemini to give you a JSON list of segmentation mask where each entry contains the duty bounding box 
and then inside that we have that key plus that segmented areas and also describing what is that area and label that you have so this is this is really good one to start to keep it as is i use the same one for my demo then you can provide more instructions that hey the object that i'm looking for is this or that so consider this as a base prompt to add your own condition of what type of object and segments you're looking for and then obviously you just need to simply call gemini 2.5 here it's using flash and i would say uh, you can think set the thinking budget to zero because we are not really doing any advanced reasoning here we can also decrease the temperature because we are not looking for a very creative model here our ask is deterministic you know what we're looking for so we just know have the action being executed and then this is actually a post-processing function that capture or parse the outcome coming from the gemini prompt to capture what was the la label and that overlay and designing the mask from the areas that is reported by Gemini 2.5 and then showing that in the picture like this. So here, for example, you can see this glass jar has been asked to from Gemini to be detected and also blue pixels are overlaid on the top of that object. To show you that how that object or mass segmentation looks like from a JSON response of Gemini, here's an example. Here's the example. I was running that in Google Colab using also what Google provided. And we have this prompt that we're looking for masking for specific metal or wood or glass, regardless of what is instruction here. And we have to give it image. So following the same uh, solution that I showed the code snippet, you can see that the output has this JSON format with the box 2D, with those X and Y coordinates of the bounding box of the object that I told you. And then the masking area, which is actually have that in base 64 format that showcases in the area that we are providing the segmentation. So this is what I did to create my own demo and let me show you how I did that. What I'm using is a Simlit app UI. So I am just calling Gemini 2.5 with this specific prompt that I have for letting my drone be able to automatically land on safe or unsafe areas. Obviously this was just for sake of demonstration and my curiosity to see how it precisely can do that for me. So I'm providing these instructions, but then on the top, I'm also using the same prompt that I showed you in the original Google code snippet to make sure that I'm prompting it to give me that JSON format with that X and Y coordinates and base 64 description, plus the labels that can be descriptive of the area that we are detecting. So going back to my actually demo, I just take this screenshot from Google map and we can see that this is an area of an airport and I was prompting that I'm back in to detect uh, safe areas. You'll see that it automatically captured this red, which is unsafe, green, safe to land, and these uh, yellow ones, which are sort of neutral. So if I scroll down, not only to show me those segments, but also it is telling me the reason why, because I prompt that. So these are the safe ones because we have these safe grass area and potentially unsafe ones because we have some potential cars or or warehouse detected inside the image i think these are the warehouses actually detected and labeled by red so let me give you another example this is a simple one that is really just a beach picture uh, that we have the water area and potentially the landing area and i will just analyze it it's going to take a couple of potentially seconds to detect the objects and there you go yeah, it perfectly captured that on the right side, it has no water, so safe to land. On the left side, segmented by pixels that it's not safe. Just making sure the reasoning is also correct. I am parsing the reasoning outcome of Gemini to show that in this thing that UI. And yes, it says that you have empty space, beach, and uh, potentially grass a little bit. I think it's talking about this part. There you go. I just noticed that actually. And we have unsafe, which is water, which is correct. Let's try another one. This is also a tough one. I think we have regular pictures. I captured that again from Google Maps, some um, car parking area with some, I think, bus or trucks. So let's analyze that to see how it's gonna perform under this. And again, these are pretty challenging. These are not even actual drone shots and they're pretty zoomed out. So there are too many objects and areas and regions identified here. So I wanna see how far it can go and how many regions it can assess and mask or segment that for me. And through the reasoning, we'll see if they are safe or not. And there you go. So, so far, I think, yeah, um, almost 25 plus 9, 34 zones has been already captured, identified, or better say segmented within this given image. You'll see that uh, these are the green parts that I could potentially land. But within these green lines, there are some 
yellow ones and i think these yellow ones are these bus that it's not okay to land potentially on the top of that they could land but that's why even within the safe zones we have unsafe zones perfectly detected look at this one we have these green parts that is safe to land because obviously they are grass but there are trees that are definitely killers for drones and these trees are perfectly colored as red or segmented as red because they're not safe we have some i think uh railways out if i'm not mistaken that are detected as potentially okay to land on the top or some of them are not at all in case if they're in the railways which is are not definitely safe obviously i could prompt it better to make sure that if there's no zone area for even landing a drone let me know but it's not following the rules it's just really following the prompts that it provided so you can see that the safe zones like grass field country yards are all detected correctly and we have so many cars roads building rooftops Road with traffic, trees, these are the ones that perfectly captured as unsafe. And uh, neutral zones, there are some potentially people-oriented areas that I could see more in details, maybe in this parking area, that is okay to land, but we should be very cautious that is far from people that are potentially walking here. So now this was just one quick example of how you can really have this conversational, or better to say reasoning-based image segmentation that beyond goes beyond just naming an object and having that segmented so what other use cases you can enable i think for areas like content creation it will really complement your photoshop journey if you are looking for removing an object changing a background or even live when i have now right, talking to you i could maybe use this image segmentation to remove background or add objects or do any live editing through camera feed not just images which is also extremely powerful so think about that what you could do in your content creation journey or for quality control if you want to detect a specific defects or anomalies that is hard to have those objects labeled for a training data you just need to type some characteristics of a defect and it will automatically capture that for you without any training or retail analytics if you want to track inventory or analyze customer behavior which is really prompting what you want, you can have that detection and segmentation. Lastly, for autonomous systems, like that drone example, or self-driving cars, that you want to make sure you detect people who are not just sitting, they're walking, they're running, they're crossing the road. So having these reasoning that specify a condition, then doing segmentation can be achieved through this example. All right, that was all about this new feature of Gemini 2.5, which is conversational image segmentation. It got released a couple of days ago that I'm recording this video. I found it extremely powerful to really empower a lot of use cases that I'm pretty sure you're thinking about that. And I would love to know what are what those are if you write them in the comment section or tell me what you think about if you have any questions. Or in general comments, share your, your thoughts and make sure to subscribe so you won't miss the next video. Thank you so much.